BLG one game away from locking themselves with a showdown with FBX. EDG fighting for their tournament and season live. Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be bringing you game four of this best of five series, BLG taking game two. And again, what has been the, a standard of this particular series, if you say, you got blue side, you're good. You got it. You can win this. EDG again showing that they didn't really know how to use the tools they were given. Yeah, red side drafting is not the strengths of Heart or EDG. So again, we're going to see them back to the blue side. And I think we're going to see some very similar strategies focusing on that killing on the bottom with their second and third pick. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see exactly how they're going to adapt to us. So I want to see what BLG can do to kind of counteract it because, like we said, you know, in game two, BLG did not look bad. They just kind of randomly threw it at the Baron. I feel like they can still take this game even with EDG having the priority on that blue side. Definitely. Uh, they've shown throughout the series that they can play extremely safe in the bottom lane, never really die or overstep in a kill lane set up by EDG. And if they have the scaling and the team fight prep work, they should be able to overtake this series. It really is EDG walking on the tightrope. I want to see what special champions they have. I do not want to see Scout on Azir anymore. Yeah, we're I done. I don't think it's, we're it's, done. it's not a good but strategy. They had Aurelia available every single yes. game. So and it's something I'm, kind of, it. I'm something I'm kind of wondering if they're like, maybe it's something they know that BLG can deal with because they've scrimmed against the other so many times. I don't I, know. It just seems like a very <sighs> odd thing to not pick up. Yes, Aurelia has been Scout's best champion and one of the most banned champions against the team. They're great in both the solo lanes with the cha uh, with the champion, and they're just not picking it. I'm, I'm kind of shocked, as same as you are. We'll have to wait and see how the draft goes. We've got to talk about the MVP in that last game. And of course, it was the Rampaging Viking. It was going to be Meteor on the Olaf. You can't not you, ha you can't give him this guy you can't give him this champion. No, you definitely cannot. 100% win rate this entire split. Everyone has been banning away from it. Over 60% of the games did feature BLG getting uh, or, uh getting their own Olaf banned. So the entire league knows it. But when it comes to playoff time, EDG definitely felt like there was a bit too much on their hands, and they did accidentally let this get through the draft. And there's so many things. Like we said, this was kind of uh, this was a perfect draft, if you like. If you're a BLG and you know analyst or even a fan, you're kind of going like, oh, so they gave us our Yumi and Olaf and our Karma and our Sivir to make sure our bot lane went okay. And ADD still got Aatrox? Yeah, okay, this, cool. is a, we'll take those. this is a prototype draft that a lot of coaches uh, will make up. And uh, you're lucky if you ever get this type of a, uh, a game in. And we can see here how strong that uh, how strong the sustain really is in these fights you can switch targets on Yumi very easily multiple times you have double front lines in the uh, Aatrox and the Olaf to swap towards and then you can protect the back line yada yada it's very easy to run if people don't get a full kill onto you you almost always just run them down game was already very far out of EDG's hands here one last ditch effort they don't find Jinja in fact not even touch by the Flash E combo, and he's able to wipe up the remaining members of EDG. Yeah, you can see as well, with Jinu getting on top of him, there was actually a lot of damage that went down. So I feel like it had they just been a little bit more coordinated with the Gragas and Camille kind of combination, they could have been able to try and burst down the Sivir. And once that Sivir's gone, a lot of your damage on the side of BLG wasn't there. That's not how it went down. BLG took the game. BLG now one game away from taking the series and looking towards that semifinal with Fun Plus Phoenix. And it is a historical moment. EDG started from 2014, might miss their first world. It seems like death taxes an EDG in the LPL, but we could see that change in just one game's time. A lot to defend for this organization, the most successful organization, the most consistent organization in the LPL, and they have to write their destiny today. Yeah, most appearances from a Chinese team as they sit on five world appearances, five in a row as well. And similar to how we were so shocked when TSM still sitting above the uh, most particip you know, best participating team, if you like, sitting at seven, only missed one world championships. And I'll be, or sorry, technically, yeah, technically one. We'll see how Gauntlet goes. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, and I say that as a TSM fan yeah. as well, like so. But at the same time, EDG, they're not out of it just yet. They are on blue side for this pick and ban. We've seen what blue side can do for this matchup. And like you said, EDG just feels so much more comfortable on the blue side in the drafting phase compared to when they are on the red.
Yeah, just uh, not a great use of those counter picks most of the time for EDG. You don't really see the dominant laning phase, even on red side. Now we're going to take a bit of a stat peek at Jin Zhao and Xingmo in their previous game. 87.5% kill participation. You can expect that from the Yumi composition, just chasing everyone down. And Jin Zhao ended the game with over a 3k advantage over Ivor. Very comfortable cushion for him. And I think as well for like for Xingmo, it's, it's kind of like the unsung hero of the of the uh, BLG squad because he just doesn't seem to be, you know, he's never super hard impacting, but he's where he needs to be and he's mechanically incredibly good. He's just not the flashy player. He's just the, the stone that sits there and goes, you know what, I'm doing my job and that's all I need to do. He's a very different player from what we've seen uh, in the past of BLG supports, guys like Road guys that really like to roam around and cause chaos. Xingmo, as a rookie, and that's kind of expected, does play more of a, you know, protect Jin Zhao Ro. So you, you don't see his name mentioned much, but he is a big part of BLG's success. He was on the only roster change from spring to summer, and that has resulted in a very positive win ratio. Yeah, got themselves top four in the regular split. Now in the playoff run, and we'll see now as the crunch comes in, it's crunch time for EDG. Let's see if we do see any cheats as we're going to pick some bands for game four. Take it out. This is your last chance. Right now, EDG, what do you leave up? What do you take away? What do you give over? We're going to be banned by BLG. Kali as well. Imagine to see the Kiana as well as their final ban. But the Olaf not going to be finding its way into Meteor's hand. And it's going to serve as a good reminder for anyone else if they do go up against BLG that you can't really give this man this champion. No, just don't do it. It's way too dangerous. We're going to see Silas again from game two on EDG's first pick. So going with the same strategy, but they could also change it up. Jijia actually does play a lot of the uh, a lot of Silas in the jungle as well. Now this is a check at BLG getting Olaf banned from them. It was banned in 20 out of their 35 games. And when they pick it, they have 100% win rate. So over 60% like we were talking about, that was not a misquoted stat. It's just how good Meteor is on the Berserker. Now ADD going again with this Aatrox pick. Pretty damn happy with it the last two games. Gonna go with it one more time. Meteor gonna take the Jarvan this time around. So has the Cataclysm to try to set some stuff up. And now EDG, what is your response? What are you looking for here? Kaiser to get some decent sustain. You imagine here, they do try and lock in their bot lane and try and work towards getting iBoy and Mako some kind of an advantage. Should be the Nautilus that they're considering here. That's the typical go-to. Yumi is still available. Uh, Yumi, I wouldn't consider Yumi Kaisa kill lane, which is what they need. But instead, they're going to pick up the Renekton, another champion that has actually been the most played for Jinu across this regular split. Let's see what BLG want to go for here. I was going to say, I'm more likely to see them lock in an ADC. Make sure Jin Zhao is able to get something that he is comfortable on, otherwise the bands come in thick and fast. It's both sides lock in relatively similar picks and we can see the Jace being banned again from the side of BLG. They really do not want it in the hands of Jinu or Scout. And for good reason. Jace right now, pretty pretty solid place in the meta. Yeah, it's just been triple ban against Scout every single game in this series. Sometimes even more than triple. So, to be expected from EDG. Uh, EDG, they have themselves a very powerful early game composition with the amount of crowd control they can have. Uh, JJ will has a very high chance of just taking the Silas in the jungle. They have a great, you know, ADAP combination in the top side to lock down kills and maybe finally get a handle of ADD. And this potential swap has really been a thorn in BLG's drafting side. You can see they're splitting their bands between the uh, mid lane and the jungle just because of this Silas. Silas, of course, can go to top jungle or mid. They're going to see what they can do with that one there. The Azir ban and the Karma ban as well towards Koro in that mid lane. Means the logical move here will be go towards that Corky. Corky has a decent laning phase into the Silas should it go into Scout's hand. But Scout, I feel like he's the, you know, Corky ultimate is one of the most efficient ones because he does get the resets on his uh, passive, able to kind of use it for a pretty damn efficient wave clear. A lot of things you can do against the Corky though. It doesn't have the greatest of priorities. So we've been seeing things like you know, Talia pop up. We've been seeing Silas is actually still fine here. And uh, also the Cassidy has been an interesting one, <laughs> but we're not going to see it. 
Brag is locked up for more initiation. And finally, the kill lane is complete. Kaisa plus Volley Bear. Uh, Mako so far has won one out of three games uh, on this kill lane composition. It is very, very much dependent on early game uh, laning phase. And once again, we're going to see EDG go down that same path. Get kills in the bot lane or go home. Get kills or go home as to see the Volley Bear locked in with that Kaiza. A lot of early game burst damage available here to the EDG bot side alongside of that Gragas should he come down and try and help it. However, you do have a fairly tanky Nautilus on the other end for Zing Mao or Zing Mu, excuse me. And again, BLG, I don't think they're unhappy with this draft. I think they're very secure in what they wanted to do and how they're going to be able to play around the EDG solo lanes. I will say this is a much improved draft from EDG. I think this is probably their best draft overall in the series. They have a strong kill lane in the mid uh, 2v2. Priority there as well. There's good crowd control in both of the side lanes, so JJ can roam and make plays happen wherever he wants to go. It fits their style to a T. And if EDG had a chance in any of these games to secure a win, I would say their chances are the highest with this draft. EDG getting what they want, early priority, early roaming potential, scout on someone who can make plays, as well as that kill lane in the bot side with the big old bear. But Jade for BLG, gonna be definitely looking towards a potential semi semi-final showdown with Fun Plus Phoenix, the number one team in the regular split. BLG, they gotta conquer this first hurdle. You can't be looking at a uh, too far ahead, otherwise you'll end up tripping over yourself. Yeah, Jarvan doesn't have a lot of great targets in this setup. Uh, you look at the, uh, the mid lane, Corky's not gonna give you that priority, and uh, I do expect him to go tank and just try to lock people up in the late game. Let the two 80 carries do their job in Kuro and Jinja. It's a very solid composition. However, it does get going a little bit late. Well, EDG looking to keep their season alive. 2-1 down as we jump onto the rift for game four. Can BLG take this one 3-1 or are we going to a game five? It's the first time we've actually not had any more chance because I realized <laughs> that, uh, oh, there was one on the back end there, but no one really cared. And uh, <laughs> But again, you saw all the pings going out onto the map as well. Both yeah, sides yeah. spanning out very yeah, defensively, trying to get as much information as they possibly can. Quick look at the runes. Actually, they were necked into the Aatrox. So I like this from Jinu, realizing that the Aatrox Camille lane was not really working out for him that no. much. Decides to go with someone with a lot more early kill pressure. And I like the Renekton into this particular matchup within the first, say, you know, seven, eight levels. Yeah, you have to recognize ADD's ability to dodge out on the, uh, uh, just kind of sidestep Camille as uh, she comes in with the hook shot. So, you know, Jinu just going with the, basically, uh, instant stun coming in from Renekton. Try and sidestep that is his answer to the aid trucks. Very hard to uh, sidestep a point and click CC when you're within, uh, within auto attack range as well as an AOE Q. Very difficult to uh, to kind of sidestep that stuff and we'll be curious to see exactly how that matchup goes. Scout already looking to try and go head to head with Kuro who's got the Gatling going to to try and push him back. But overall, this lane is going to be pretty damn simple for both sides. Meteor, though, potentially looking to shut down this bot lane straight away. Will we see the level two engage coming out here? Two for spicy. two, three for two, know. flashing. Mako gets caught. He's not got much places to go. Ignite used, both flashes burned. Advantage to BLG. Huge win for EDG. Getting that Volley Bear flash means that he just can't do much in the lane anymore. And he's not that useful out of lane either, so EDG have to look for other venues. They will look for it in the mid lane, and Kuro gets deleted! Scout picks up another first blood. Yeah, that's a very good start to the game. EDG, I think they should shy away from their bot lane sometimes, but, uh, you know, just getting that good kill, opening up their options in the map, so crucial. And taking a look at the runes here, ADD this time not going to go for the Conquerors anymore. Doesn't favor the sustained trades versus Renekton. Instead, we do see him picking up multiple healing items from the Domination Tree. And Jinu able to force him underneath the tower. Spotted, though. 
as the Gragas is being spotted out. Good respect being played by ADD, but uh, he just wants to try and get an experience range. He knows he's probably going to lose a lot of these uh, minions, and JJ is pretty much certain that he knows that he's been spotted out on wards, or a vision, I should say, but doesn't matter. Just wants to try and lose as much money from this Aatrox as he possibly can. Very well done by ADD. I've been super impressed by how he's been able to avoid most of the games. Uh, ganks coming in for him this series. These are not easy situations to outplay, and EDG has consistently been looking to tower dive him. Missy Jinu trying to just go for a little bit of a favorable trade. Had got the rage stacked up, so healed fairly significantly off of that Q. And overall, EDG are the ones with the slight advantage in the mid lane, and that's the kind of the little scary thing, if you want to say, is that like you know, if Scout gets rolling and if Scout gets ahead, that's where this game can kind of you know all of a sudden flip, and you could look to see EDG with a newfound confidence just rallying behind their mid laner. Oh, we've seen how uh, the Silas picks works in the late game when he gets a Nautilus ultimate. The AP ratios on that death charge is absolutely sickening, and you can just blow up half health and AD carry with one point and click ability alone. It's really difficult to play around in the later phases of the game. So I think BLG will need to look for some ways to keep that lane even. It's still a very easy kill lane for uh, Scout to execute. And I do expect to see Meter being pulled to the center of gravity. Kuro just trying to reset the lane there. Scout had yet to go back after that kill in the mid lane. So still sitting on his gold that he had acquired from the wave and of course the kill. Mako nicely putting himself between the wall and the Nautilus, so made sure he did not get pulled back further than he wanted to. I feel, felt like a curved def, uh, curved Q through the uh, through the wall. <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised that one hit. Nautilus can curve bullets. If you've ever played against a Nautilus in solo Q, you know as well that uh, randomly the Nautilus Q will just hit, and you're not quite sure why or how, but. EDG do get the back off for iBoy. They are trying to just delay Jin Zhao now. Like this idea from them, just make sure they can kind of delay or kind of, you know, equal out, if you like, the CS they had just lost to the tower. And ADD and feeling a lot more punished in this lane compared to the Camille one. However, is playing it fairly decently and able to kind of go toe to toe fairly well. Not tr losing a huge amount of CS. If anything, if he picks up all these uh, minions, should be able to actually equal it out, if not go higher. Yeah, it does seem he's actually out trading uh, Jinbu most of the time here. Uh, he's always been able to get his Deathbringer stance and has not taken extra damage off of the Ruthless Predator. So, uh, once again, I, I just feel like ADD on Aatrox has been one of the defining strengths of BLG throughout the entire series. It's been consistently winning lane. Uh, regardless of what you throw at it. And you have to pay the Aatrox tax, which is the Executioner's Calling. <laughs> I like this from Jinu, able to kind of realize that he was, uh, if he wants to try and really turn this into a kill lane, good movement here from EDG means they will also get themselves an early Cloud Drake. First time we've actually had all series where a m Infernal has not been the first spawn, and the second one is going to be a Cloud as well. So the Dragon's finally calming down. Not going to see much pressure Aww. around the Dragons. I would not mind if there were only two drakes left in the world. I definitely would not. <laughs> One of them was Elder. <laughs> That's a dragon. That's not a drake. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've had this conversation know, before. I'm not. You know what? We we nearly lost our friendship over it, so I'm not even going to bring it up. We we can't survive that. We're not Medivedi. We can't survive a, a shaking like what's the difference between a drake and a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> I think we still can. We can work on it. We can try. While we're trying to do that, EDG are going to be trying to push their advantages wherever they can. Have got this kill lane in the bot side, not able to utilize it just yet. Did see a little bit of focus, though, from the side of BLG in that early gank for the level 2 from Meteor to try and nullify it as much as he could. And JJ just wants Meteor to know yeah, that I he, like is how he stays I took around. your buff, <laughs> just so you're aware. And uh, Again, tracking these junglers very key for both these sides' success within the ganking and laning phase. A scout sneaks himself up towards this top side. They are pinging the missing. But those right now, you got the Predator being popped as well. Is JJ going to run up here to ADD? They have not got the wave prep, though. So it's a little bit late here as they flash in, get the knock up, get the damage down, and get the kill. EDG will be able to pick up that one pretty damn cleanly. Yep. 
One flash expended only for that one, and it was very well done on that side. ADD still has his teleport, though, so they're not actually going to get that much of a CS lead onto Jinu for that one. And I, I hope... Uh, the, the problem here for EDG really is what can they... Uh, how can they defend their bottom side the afterwards? BLG, they're actually going to use ADD's teleport right in the bot side, and they're going to get a great flash from iPoint. Oh. Here's the response now from the side of EDG as they're looking to turn this one around. Here's Jinu as well. Top laners both coming towards this bot side. Fantastic reactionary play from iBoy to not go down. Yeah, iBoy, this series has just been on point the entire way, uh, outside from that Drake fight from Game 3, but he's been playing so cleanly, so safe throughout this one. And we've seen this happen in the previous series where EDG makes a play on the top side, eight trucks, AD is just able to equalize with his own skill, and then they get more out of the bottom. But finally this time, they have that defensive play in mind for EDG. They prevent the tower dive, and all's well. That was a lot of resources used as well from the LG to kind of come out with nothing. Yes, you gain the two summoners from the EDG AD carry. However, you're kind of hoping you get those and a kill. So not the best of situations for them in particular. As we see now, the Nautilus finding himself up towards this top side. Jinu, no flash. There is a flash on ADD. So where do they want to go for this one right now? He looks to try and defend this pink ward. Right now, I feel like EDG, they gotta know something's going on. Yeah. They definitely should feel a bit fishy with the bot lane just disappearing. And this is one of those rare roams from Xingmo. We were talking about him as more, you know, sticking to his own lane, but an early mobility boots roam. And I I'm actually surprised EDG did not fall for that. Well done on their part. They're not a veteran squad for nothing. They have seen many, many times and been to many, many finals. It's a very big uphill battle for them to make it this time around. And what they are hoping for right now is they're hoping to win this game, win or lose against FPX. They're looking for third or higher. That's yep. what they need to get themselves into the world's gauntlet. It'd be a massive upset, I feel, if they were able to take down FBX in that best of five. However, they're still not doom and gloom if they lose that one should they win this series. They should still be able to make it to the world's gauntlet given that they may or may not win the third place playoff. There's yeah, a lot of busts, a, a lot of, lot of matches for them. for them. Yeah, a lot of matches in there. To say that though, big Meteor, chunk. big chunk. Still have the Corky ultimate available. We'll just try and chuck it out for Pope. Meteor will not go down, does keep his flash as well, but good pressure here from Scout. Very similar air to him and the Silas as it was in that first game, or sorry, second game. Uh, what happened this game is I'm very, very surprised by uh, BLG's decision to give side selection over to EDG, but wait a minute. Let's see, a flip, hook, both supports just trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. It ends up being in favor of the Nautilus and Zayas. Jinu's now starting to take these trades more favorably in his corner. Does have the Executioner's Calling as well, so definitely looking to try and punish ADD on this, you know, Aatrox pick. And I like this from EDG. They're the ones, the first ones to rotate towards the Rift Herald, knowing that Meteor had to go back, given how low he was taken by Scout. And this is positives from you know the side of EDG. They're the ones making the decisions. They're the ones setting the tempo. As ADD forced to use the World Ender just for a little bit of extra movement speed. Here's Meteor. Flashes over. Going to try and look to see if he can get something here onto the Volley Bear. He will go down. Cataclysm as well. TP's coming in. Scout, your 1v4. Needs to be so, so careful. We'll jump in now. And they're looking to try and just trade towers right now. It looks like Scout's going to try and keep himself alive. It'll be very, very difficult against the four strong of BLG. Yeah, they're definitely looking at this tower dive, and Scout is goading them to walk through the tower. Can he find something here? Good Great flash! Great flash, and Jin Zhao taking so low. Oh. Now he can possibly turn this a 1v4. He will not push it any further, but overall, it's EDG. We're coming out on top. They get top tower tier 1, looking for top tower tier 2, and they don't even lose the bot, la bot lane tower. This is actually huge. Are you kidding me? Scout is a god. They trace so favorably in the, those objectives. Two kills for two towers? That is a Done deal on EDG's side. Overall, it has just been a slow and steady series, but right now, EDG are proving that they are the ones with the faster mindset, the faster rotation, and some great fancy feet from Scout to not go down. And I like the idea as well. He didn't stay under tower once he saw the enemy minion wave come in. He immediately went on top of Kuro to force them to go under the tower themselves to help out their mid laner, and overall protects the tower.
Yeah, he's definitely going for the uh, aggressive play in that situation, and what a good read by him. It just saves EDG so much tempo, so much money, and even with EDG not having a winning bot lane, uh, they're still in a very favorable position on the map. I think mainly all of the pressure is just emanating from Scout in the mid lane. He got that first blood, kept track of Meteor, took the blue buff uh, away from uh, from Kuro to get that priority, to extend that priority, and EDG find themselves in a very strong position on the map where they should be able to dominate this next Drake and look for even more initiations. Early game going in favor of EDG, but they are not a million miles away from the side of BLG. Only a thousand gold in favor of the Knights. This has got to be the happiest volley bear we've ever seen. <laughs> Double cloud Drake run at your face. Soon to be triple. Just all the movement speed you could possibly have. And I actually prefer, like, a lot of people obviously give a lot of flack to the Cloud Drake. I actually like Cloud Drake when you're able to stack it. It makes rotations yes. a lot easier. It means that you're able to get yourselves around the map and catch up to the side of BLG. It makes being a step ahead of the team a lot easier. When you want to run it down, take no substitutes. It's basically <laughs> what we're talking about. <laughs> get the fastest running shoes you possibly can. It will help you run it down as fast as you can. Scout, though, does not have vision on... Meteor, as of this moment, is going to try and just clear that wave and free himself up for a bit of a blue buff take. It's the first blue buff Kuro actually got this game, so... Let's see why he was uh, struggling within the lane priority. And JJ just trying to see if he can get any kind of information right now. We'll spot out the roaming duo of Shinmo and Meteor. But now Jinmo in a little bit of trouble. Does get his Nautilus ultimate stolen. Does Scout look for anything more? Nope. Just want to try and put down his pressure and presence. Right now we're kind of back to a little bit of a lull. 15 minutes into the game, you've got the Black Cleaver finished up onto your Renekt. And Jinu is going to back away from ADD. Didn't think he was in much danger there, especially with his flash up. But Triforce finished up for the Corky compared to the Proto Belt of the Silas. You've now finally got the... Manamune stacking for your uh, Kaiza as well. So right now, you feel like the the onus is on top of EDG to make some plays and to continue themselves towards a you know a winning snowballing trajectory. As I say that though, Kuro oh. going to be Nautilus ultimate. I'm going to follow him all the way through through the package. So ultimate for a package, not a bad trade if you're on the side of EDG. That was an interesting way to play it. EDG don't really have the siege potential here, so they're just uh, looking to pick people off as they rotate towards the scene. Kuro, obviously very veteran, is not going to face check into that one. And the game kind of comes to a lull, and drags down a little bit. I do see EDG continuing to just snowball the Drakes and BLG continuing to not care because it is a cloud. Wouldn't it be really cool if we swap cloud movement speed for like a slow or something? So oh, he that was like a broken. snow drake. Are you kidding me? But like not like a crazy ass slow. I'm talking like you know, like 0.5 of a second, like or something like that's, that. That's you know? so huge. It that, is. That would be it's like, a, like a little mini frozen mallet on everybody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stack him up I'm to very three. Happy and you're not <laughs> on the balance team. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm trying to come up with solutions. I right? know, very, I know. I'm sorry. Very easy to criticize, or very hard, very easy to destroy, very hard to create. That's all True. I'm saying, Clem. True. But yes, you're probably right. That would be very <laughs> broken. <laughs> Imagine junglers coming in with bread buff and ice drake tan. <laughs> yeah, snow drake for the snowball. That's how you do it. Yeah, talking about balls, Meteor actually has some very interesting experience. You know he was actually a pro in, uh, in ping pong? He was top eight in a nation of over a billion people. He was top eight Chinese ping pong? Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Uh, this guy What made him swap? Huh? Do you know what made him swap from being a ping pong potential world champion uh, to apparently a... Apparently uh, playing video games all day is a bit easier than uh, the physical practice. <laughs> I, I get that. I get that. Plus, I suppose the money. Ping pong, not exactly the most lucrative of uh, sponsorship uh, it, deals. It's actually far more lucrative. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The, the more you know. Uh, yeah, but take a look at this one. Where is Jinjo going to go? He's just going to go straight underneath his tower. They do bait themselves. A TP as ADD just join up and towards that bot side. No real loss as such as there is only a necked or inhibitor turret up in that top side. But good proactive move from EDG. 
I will say that uh, Meteor was only in the youth group, so it's not like uh, overall. You know, but I that's was still thinking, very I was impressive. Like, I was like, damn, there's got to be footage of him somewhere. Like. Yeah, there is, there is. <laughs> Definitely look for it. As they, we look for that, it's going to be EDG looking for any kind of pick they can find while they have this current mid lane priority. Kuro was backing, and they did get the TP onto the bot side, so that mid lane turret now going to be taken down from some decent EDG pressure, and that should open the map up a little more. As Rembuff gets stolen away by Jinu and finally finding himself some good fortune against ADD. Things are looking dire for BLG. They had the Void going into skirmishes where they might lose multiple members, but the slow encroachment of just Scout leaving the lane whenever he wants to is becoming too hard to deal with uh, for BLG. I, I almost feel like BLG are at the point where if they don't actually might find some pro proactive plays at these tower sieges, they're just going to slowly bleed away the game. Luckily for BLG, though, these dragon stackings are clouds, so not exactly the most impactful. Still very good, but again, not exactly the greatest thing to be getting. You would prefer a mountain or a infernal triple spawn off of the back, as you have uh, seen from our last three games. Our next one's going to be a mountain, so much more high-value Drake coming in here as we see the value of those Moby boots. Ooh, good stop! Meteor gets caught out, going to be forced to flash away. The Abstun and the Abduct does not connect. This he was is the dead power, there. power of that Volley Bear. That was very, very close. Good idea on the uh, on blocking the EQ combo. Now, Jarvan does have an Unstoppable, but that's on his Cataclysm Gap Closer, not on the EQ. And you can you can buffer the cat, uh, the um, EQ combo if you do time it absolutely correctly, but uh, has to be frame per frame. And as you say, it is just a interrupt from the you know volley bear that just makes it so difficult to to time that. And right now, EDG they're the ones that are kind of in charge, and BLG are kind of you know beside themselves a little bit. They don't really know what to do or where to kind of look for right now, because like you said, they cannot really get any kind of these like you know. 2v3, 3v2 kind of skirmishes as they're just not really at the item thresholds to really force them. And on the other side, they can't really go for 4v, or 5v5 fights because, again, EDG are just stronger right now. Yeah, BLG are pretty much just sitting back and waiting on their second item spikes. It's very powerful with the Death Dance and potentially the Infinity Edge coming in. So it's going to be a slow couple of minutes, and I think EDG are the ones that We'll look to push the tempo around the Baron phase, uh, uh, around the Baron area. They have a lot of initiation, and they will try to catch people off there. They still have a good window to to go here. Look at the uh, the itemizations from BLG. They're a ways off from hitting two items. That being said, as you just said, look at the items. That is a death cap second item for Scout. He is. <laughs> recognizing that there isn't a huge amount of magic resistance. That's just abusing the Nautilus on the composition. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. The AP scalings are quite hard. However, Kuro does a fair bit of damage himself, having picked up that Triforce. It, it frankly is kind of ridiculous when Silas gets AP ratios on tanks. Because tanks have higher AP ratios because they don't build AP. They actually kind of need that. <laughs> and yeah, for they need something. Otherwise, their ultimates just do nothing. Yeah, and, and Silas just abuses that so hard. He's going to get an ultimate on the entire team with that death cap. Oh, here we go. JJ looking for a predator gank against this top side. A scout and was fishing as well. Eyeboy just clears out the mid lane. Still looking to stack up his mana mune to a mura mana. Overall, it looks like EDG are setting themselves up for a Baron, getting themselves some good vision control. There should be no way Kuro gets caught here. Well, there could be a way the Nautilus get caught, though. True. They are just going to force themselves in. Really look to try and stamp their foot on top of the LG. This is to stay within the series. You can see EDG feeling confident. All about the blue sides in this particular matchup. The LG need to be very, very careful that they don't leave themselves open for a quick Baron take. You've got the Kaiser, who does a fair bit of damage onto that, and some decent sustain off of the Baron as well from the likes of the Renekton and the Gragas. So not exactly a huge risk to be taking, even if you do end up kind of backing away from it from the side of EDG. I do really like JJ going for the Zanias versus Simon. He went for the Morellos in the previous games. 
but uh, this will allow him to start that fight, be the main initiator on the team. And that gives Renekton a lot of room to work with. Uh, what we've been seeing from EDG games a lot of times is Jinu tries to be the main initiation on the team, and he just evaporates, like nothing happens afterwards. So for BLG, what do they want to do right now? We talked about how they can't really fight in a 4v5 or 5v5. They're just not strong enough. They can't really go for skirmishes. What is the answer for the side right now? Because right now it seems to be like they can't do anything. Oh, if they scale on, they still have the... Uh, I would say they still have the better front line here. And just waiting for items is okay. They're waiting on that crucial two item for Kuro. That's been the main break point. They have the two on Jin Zhao, but not having the two on ADD and Kuro just means they can't fight right now. Bib of Steel coming in. It's 30 seconds until the oh, Baron spot. Oh, JJ did not get the... Uh, did not get the smite, unfortunately, to steal that one away. We are going to see ultimates burn there in that mid lane, and EDG starting to flex a little bit on, on the side of BLG, showing that we can take any side of the jungle we want. Just depends on if you are brave enough to call us on this particular move. Yeah, Cooldown advantage for Scout here, but it does mean no death charge. Oh, here we go. We're going to see now the Nautilus and the Volibear taken so damn low. Even with a healing, you have got an immediate flash from ADD. This is TP Ward came in straight away, had to get himself away. So overall, it is an advantage, you would say, in favor of BLG. Mako was taken very, very low. However, summoners roughly the same across the board. HP bars are in favor of BLG. They do have a stronger position now. And the question is, uh, what can Scout do without his ultimate? Uh, it looks like EDG are just going to play Disruption until that one comes back up. I've got the ultimate available now. They are going to steal the Cataclysm as the Dragon does reset. BLG looking to try and deny this one away from EDG, who find themselves a little bit split up. As EDG go in for a straightaway fight, and he goes get the Zonya straight away out of Scout. That's a good explosive cast, but a good, a better Cataclysm as BLG are starting to route this fight. Kuro and Jin Zhao are untouched, and the Dragon is in their favor. They will be able to pick up this objective. They pick up two kills to one, and BLG are not out of this yet. Yeah, they're finding a really strong position there. Scout goes in, but it was a little bit too telegraphed for BLG, and they could react to it very well. Didn't find the kill on the initial uh, initial just cataclysm, and BLG uh, are playing this front to back line very, very, uh, very adeptly. Jinjal didn't have his ultimate for that one, but he could survive the cataclysm. Everyone kites back, they make sure they're safe, they keep EDG out of the rotation, and they just win that front to back. The tower does fall as well, so two kills. A dragon to their trouble as well as bot lane turret, so they will bring the gold up to about two and a half thousand. It's Mako. You're by yourself, buddy. You need to, you need to have a get yourself into the buddy program. You can't go wandering alone. That Whenever is so dangerous. You want to dive in a team fight like this, you have to dive in threes. Just Scout going in by himself. Oh, oh here as we, we go. say, dive in threes. They look for the damage of oh. the ADD and they will find him. Mako goes golden as well. And now Scout joins the fight. A DDG three man knock up with the stolen Nautilus ultimate. And Kuro might have just brought himself to die. The killer instinct. It's going to be a quadra kill for iBoy. And EDG are going to barrel up the mid. Full team ace off a magnificent team fight start from Mako. We were talking about the win rate that he had with this champion, but he proves us wrong. Comes out of vision, gets the knockdown on ADD, and he dies before he hits the floor. They're going to look for the end here, I think. They're popping the Dominus as well and keep the minion waves alive. They're going to look to try and just end this. Nexus turrets in their sight. They've only got 10 seconds, though. This is going to be such a close call. EDG, are they going to send us to a game five, or are we going to be looking at a potential reverse ace? They're going to look for Nexus number one, Nexus turret number two. Out. Here we go. They're going to try and go for it. It's the flash burn by iBoy. Do they have the damage? I think they do. They're going to look for oh. it. They're going to get it. EDG, bring us to a game five. EDG keep their hopes alive with that one. Ruthless Predator to finish off the Nexus tower. And it seems like if you get Silas ahead, if you get Scout into the matchup, then he will just dominate early game priority. We've been seeing why BLG has to throw so many bans against the superstar coming from Edward Gaming. Straight away, and I want to say fantastic move there. Fantastic foresight to realize they had the advantage. They hex flash with the volley bear, Mako gets a thing, and then a three-man Nautilus ultimate that was stolen 
was used by Scout, able to knock them all up and set up everything on a plate. Ladies and gentlemen, quickest game of the series so far, and it is also bringing us to a fifth and final game. It's a best of one. However, BLG have blue side, or rather have side selection, yes, it's, and you would imagine they're going to go towards the It's super rare to see teams actually give over dynamic side selection in game four. Usually, everyone just uses their first three dynamics in the first four uh, in the first four games. But this time around, BLG do give themselves saving grace in the last game. They most likely will be heading to blue side, and I think that should be able to deny the Silas away. That's what that has been winning EDG this entire series so far, keeping them in it, and they have to keep Scout down. They have to do something, and like I say, like, great, you know, kind of idea, if you like, from the side of EDG coming into this one as well, because I like the idea that the fact that as soon as the ace came in, it was immediate, pop Dominus, tank for the minions, do, give us, do not give, give the enemy team backdoor bonus, get the Nexus, and they knew it was very close, but they knew they could do it. Overall, fantastic game from EDG. And the EDG faithful, our producer right now, sitting up in the uh, <laughs> sh Shout out to you, Rose. I know she's having, a, like, she's a massive EDG fan. And I can imagine a lot of EDG fans right now are just kind of like, <sighs> it, it seems like BLG is just winning like 80% of the series and EDG are just catching them off guard around Baron over and over Fun again. Fun fact, they're only winning 50% of the series. I need mean, game time. You actually feel like BLG are ahead. Oh, that's that, that's that demon laugh. That's Irish my laughter. demon laugh when I actually get like a really good bad joke out. But, but yeah, I completely agree. It looks like BLG are like, it's they're out, they're not, they're in control until they're not into control. Yeah, and it feels like until they're not. Yeah, they're winning until they're not. But even I got to give props though to EDG in that particular game because that game felt like EDG were in control. That game felt like EDG were the one dictating the pace. And even around that kind of like dragon fight, which BLG won it still felt like EDG were the ones waiting to pull the trigger. And if they can bring that into the game five, they have a very solid chance. However, if they go and nosedive their draft, like we've seen them in game one and three, then they're not looking so hot. But right now they've at least given themselves a chance. There's a couple things I think EDG did very well in this game. First off, they protected their bot lane from catastrophe. This is something that didn't happen in the previous games. They just let their, they just got, hey, we got to kill on ADD. And they look at their bot lane, it's on fire, everything's yeah. in the dumpster. <laughs> this so, is fine. Okay. Yes, they did a much better job at that one. Iboy was doing much better. But the real question remaining is, how do they draft under red? Side. That's the big red flag. Every team on blue side has won so far this series. Nobody has found anything on red side. It's up to EDG to reverse that trend. We'll have to wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going the distance for the first time in the summer playoffs of 2019. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to bring you the fifth and final game of the day.